Hello everyone, Argolfonf here with a review for Nancy Drew, Treasure in the Royal Tower. This is the fourth game in the Nancy Drew series. It was released in November of the year 2000. I'm going to be playing the game in the background here, just so you can have something to look at and you can hear the background music while I'm talking. This is going to be like my other reviews, in that I played the game from start to finish and I took notes on everything that I thought was interesting or worth noting, so it's going to be a long review that covers pretty much the entire game. So let's get started! Treasure in the Royal Tower! The game starts with Nancy writing a letter to George. Nancy's on a Wisconsin ski vacation, but a snowstorm has ruined everything, now she's stuck inside and it's boring. Then, Nancy explains that it's not boring at all. The building is a huge old castle with dead ends and secret passageways, and there's a mystery because the caretaker's acting strangely. So really, even if Nancy could go skiing, she'd still be inside investigating. Nancy's opening letter appears in her inventory, and I liked that. I think this is the only game where the opening letter is an inventory item and not just a plot device to introduce us to the story. Also, this is Jacques Brunet, the hot ski instructor. Nancy took a candid photo of him when he wasn't looking. Naughty, naughty Nancy. Another cool thing uh, about having the opening letter in your inventory is that it guides the player to Dexter, because the first thing you need to do is drop off the letter with Dexter and start the chore run. More on that later. After the letter, we have Nancy's room. I'm gonna be honest, I, I, don't like, I don't like her room. I think it's really bland, the colors are muted, and it tries to trick you into thinking it's got a lot more going on than it actually does by spreading things out unnecessarily. Uh, that is, you have three things to, to pick up in Nancy's room. We have her room card key, we have the pamphlet inside her luggage, and you have the room service menu. In real life, uh, I, I mean, all these three things are put in separate locations for really no apparent reason. In real life, Nancy wouldn't put half of her stuff in dressers and then half her stuff in her luggage. She's not a slob. Or is she? Is she a slob? Because her family does have a housekeeper. Maybe she is a slob. I don't know. So, uh, we also in the room, we have a radiator, which is making noise, and a telephone. The telephone system got upgraded in this game. Oh, boy! I like the voicemail system. Kind of sorry it didn't really, uh, become a mainstay of the series, because it was neat. I liked getting voicemails. We also have an operator. An operator. You could call the operator, but that is not very neat. All it does is call Dexter at the front desk. Why would you need to call him when you can go downstairs and talk to him in person? Also, he doesn't always pick up, like he's totally not picking up right now. So a after exploring Nancy's room, uh, we, we uh, explore the castle. Wickford Castle is a nice location. It comes off as big and imposing, and even 16 years later, these are great graphics. This is a really good looking game. The only problem people have with the castle is navigating through it because it's so big and the upper floor is mostly just identical hallways. These hallways all look identical. People easily get lost uh, the first time they play the game. It's very easy to get lost and it doesn't help that there are three dead ends which go nowhere. So you can get lost and end up in an area which is just pointless. Some people find it frustrating, other people think that the dead ends are wonderful. Me, I quickly learned where the dead ends were, and I learned to avoid those areas. Now, there is some problem with, like, the, uh, some awkwardness with going into Nancy's room, because you can't directly go into Nancy's room. What you have to do is take a step forward, and then, uh, U-turn, oh wait, take a step forward, and then U-turn, and then zoom in on here, and then zoom in on Nancy's room. And that, that, that is a little bit awkward. You'd think they would have made it a lot easier to get inside Nancy's room, considering this is one of the two rooms that you're going into in the top floor. Also, it would help if her room number was in her card. You can't really see the room number on the card there. So if you forgot what her room number was, well, guess what? You're, you're, you're in big trouble. Uh, top floor of the castle is fine. Uh, the left hallway here is basically just a mirror image of the right hallway. Uh, the first floor, I would say, is a, is a little strange. The first floor, let me go down to the first floor. 
because you can explore you can explore the the left hand side you can explore this part of the first floor thoroughly but you can't explore this part of the first floor thoroughly you cannot go there at all it's completely cut off I know there must be something there because otherwise Professor Hotchkiss's room would fall down without anything to support it uh, the basement, which is below this floor, is even smaller. It's an even smaller area. I think it's just this one passageway that's part of the ski rental place and, and no other rooms. I don't think the basement is an ideal location to put a ski shop and a locker room, but what do I know? I, I, I don't live in a castle. If I could make one change to the game's environment, I would not fill in these closed-off areas that, that you can't reach. No, what I would do is include the Royal Tower, like in the upper left-hand corner of the top floor, I'd have a locked door with a sign that says, Royal Tower, no entrance permitted, or, or, or something like that. It would stir up mystery and intrigue about what's inside the Royal Tower, especially because, you know, you'd have mysterious noises coming from that tower area at night. Plus, it'd make it more obvious that Nancy's main goal is to get inside the Royal Tower. Because when I, when I replayed this game uh, to write this review, I was surprised at how unimportant the Royal Tower is. Like, Lisa mentions it offhand, and Jock can mention it in an optional conversation, and that's it. Nobody else talks about the Royal Tower, really. We never see the tower at any point. I don't even know where to locate it on a map of the game, because the only way to reach it is through a windy tunnel to the elevator, and through another windy tunnel under the elevator. For all I know, it's not even on the property. It'd also be nice to have a locked entrance to the Royal Tower, because then you could get the key at some point and not have to go through a giant detour when you want to revisit the tower. Uh, clearly, I, I put a lot of thought into how I want the Royal Tower entrance somewhere on the top floor. Anyway, enough about the environment. Let's get to the actual gameplay. The first thing Nancy Drew does is she goes downstairs and she talks to Dexter Egan, the, this grumpy guy over here got at the front desk. He's mean and grumpy, and I like him. I mean, I'd hate to meet a guy like him in real life, but I was amused at how grouchy he was, and it's cute to see Nancy try and butter him up and get on his good side. Nancy needs Dexter to fix her radiator, but before that happens, she has to do all of his chores. Um, Dexter, Nancy is here on vacation. You're the person who runs the hotel. Fixing the hotel is your job, not Nancy's. I mean, you say that you're too busy, but all you do is stand at the front desk the whole day and scowl at people. That doesn't sound like a busy person to me. I think the chore run at the start of the game was a good idea uh, because it orients you. Uh, it gets you. It lets you get a sense of where all the uh, areas are and who all the various characters are. The problem is that Dexter makes you do five chores at the start of the game. Five at the very start of the game. I, I think it, it would have been a better idea to spread the chores out throughout the entire game as opposed to front-loading them. The first chore is to get the ski boots from the basement, where Nancy meets handsome Frenchman Jacques Brunet. Uh, Jacques is a good character, although I don't really care for him. He's got a really fake accent, uh, but he's nice enough, and he tries to make sure that Nancy has a fun vacation. He's got an interesting, he's got an interesting backstory, which I liked. Uh, not only is he having pro problems with his fiance, but he lost the Olympics. That is, he fell down and broke his leg on international television. It was very embarrassing, and he doesn't like to talk about it. That's a good backstory! I like that backstory! That's a much more interesting backstory than Patrick plays rugby and doesn't know how to swim. That, that was not a good backstory. Uh, that, that's Nancy Drew, uh, Shattered Medallion, by the way. <laughs> uh, I don't know when I'll get around to doing my review for that. I'm trying to review all the games in order, and since that's game number 30, it's probably going to be months before I get to it. So, uh, Nancy takes Jacques, uh, or, uh, she gets the ski boots from Jacques, and, uh, she takes them up to Professor Hotchkiss, who is my favorite character of the game. Uh, professor Hotchkiss is, uh, she says a lot of, she's just a nutty professor character. She's hilarious. Uh, she says a lot of crazy things, and she can never remember Nancy's name. I really enjoyed her as a joke character, and I think everybody else did too, which is why she reappears uh, again and again in, in, in later games. 
At the start of the game, though, she's less of a joke character and more of a suspicious character. See, her room was robbed recently, so she's very overprotective. She won't answer the phone or leave the room. Even when Nancy delivers the boots, Hotchkiss refuses to open the door more than a crack. We'll see that in just a moment. It really makes you curious as to what secrets Hotchkiss is hiding inside of her room. Uh, Dexter's second chore is to fix the lights on the stairs, which means you have to go to the circuit breaker and start flipping switches until you find the right one. There aren't any labels or, or anything, it's just random guessing. Uh, the good news is that the circuit breaker is close to the stairs, so it's pretty easy to go back and forth and check to see if you got the uh, right circuit breaker or not. Um, there's another weird weirdness with uh, with the um, with the, with the navigation, kind of like I can't U-turn here. I have to step forward and U-turn. That that's 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 a minor complaint. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of a strange thing. Uh, anyway, um, Dexter's third chore is to get Hotchkiss's dinner order. Where is Hotchkiss? I know her room is somewhere here. Here, here we go. Nope. Here we go. Yeah, like I said, uh, navigation in this game can be can be a little bit difficult to figure out. Okay, so when when you talk to Hotchkiss, I I, I you know obviously her anime her interacted with saving on animation by just giving you a still screen of her standing in place and not moving. Occasionally she blinks her eye, but that that's that's just kind of a little trick to make you make it seem like she's actually moving when really she's not. And, uh, okay, so those are the boots. I gave her the boots. That's great. So Dexter's third chore is to get Hotchkiss's dinner order, which me, which is a, it's a fine challenge. It's just kind of odd that Dexter only gets dinner for Hotchkiss and no one else. What, the other characters don't need to get dinner? Uh, does Dexter not care about feeding anybody else? Or did Nancy somehow pre-order every meal in advance? Uh, which is why Dexter doesn't need to know what she wants for dinner. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm sorry. That that sounded like a legitimate complaint when I was writing it. And now it just sounds like pointless complaining because it is pointless complaining. Anyway, so so the third chore is is to get uh, Hotchkiss's dinner order, which means you have to do a lot of going back and forth between the characters. So you go to Hotchkiss, and she wants couscous. So you go back to Dexter, who says he he doesn't have any. So you have to go back to Hotchkiss, who wants a menu from Nancy's room. Hotchkiss is tempted by the fried bologna sandwich. Ew. But eventually, she settles on the order of 50 chicken drumsticks. 50! 50 drumsticks! All for an old lady with green eyeshadow! I think I know why she doesn't want anybody inside her room! She doesn't want them to know that she's secretly hiding four other people inside. So, you, you go back to Dexter, who sends Nancy to relay the message to Jacques. And, uh, okay, wait a minute, wait, and then, uh, wait, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, I, I'm getting confused reading my notes here. So, you go back to Dexter, who sends Nancy to relay the message to Jock, and then Dexter fixes Nancy's radiator. So, I guess technically it, it's not five chores that Dexter makes Nancy do, it, it's four, ch it, it's it's three chores that he makes Nancy do, but that, that final chore of, of Hotchkiss's room... This is also weird navigation. I have to click in a very specific area in order to get get upstairs. That, that's kind of weird. So really, it's not it's not it's not five chores. It's just three chores. The final chore feels like three chores in one because you have to visit Dexter three times. But 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 yeah. So somewhere in the middle uh, of the chore run, Nancy should notice Lisa, the photojournalist. Uh, Lisa, the photojournalist. Let's talk to her and how. Her voice does not match her body at all. She's kind of got this weird, squeaky voice. It's a little distracting. Uh, Lisa is the one character I don't like in this game. And I it sort of feels like the only reason she's here is because she's the culprit. She doesn't have any puzzles to solve. She doesn't have any connection to the story. In fact, you only need to talk to her the once, and that's it. The rest of the time, she sits in her chair and does nothing. Now, there is a subplot about Lisa, which you can totally skip. See, Dexter mix, he mixed up the locker combinations. Yeah, the one job he actually does do himself, and he messes it up! Messes up twice! Uh, not only does he give Nancy the wrong locker combination, but the wrong locker entirely. The combination opens up uh, Nan Lisa's locker, which has several fake IDs. Nancy confronts Lisa about this, but Lisa brushes it aside as a savvy photojournalist trick. After that, the subplot is dropped and never mentioned again. 
Lisa also has a letter in Spanish, which I thought was neat. She says she doesn't know Spanish here or any foreign languages when, when, when we're first talking to her. So that's a lie. We know she's not telling the truth because we found her write a letter in Spanish or receive a letter in Spanish. Too bad nah, Nancy never confronts Lisa about this, but still it's a neat little touch to kind of prove that Lisa's uh, untrustworthy. After the chore run, the elevator breaks down. Nancy's forced to climb up through the elevator ceiling and jump to the next floor. At this point, you're supposed to notice the broken elevator shaft. You go through it to reach the library. And as soon as Nancy steps into the library, Dexter opens the door, which is incredible timing on, his, on Nancy's part. Nancy has to turn around and quickly get back inside the grate so she can watch Dexter um, turn off the alarm. Dexter talks about Edward Wickward. Well, he, he says, Darn you, old man! I know you hit it somewhere. The least you could have done was leave me a hint. So he's talking about Ezra Wickford hiding something inside the library. I would love to hear the backstory about this. Uh, Dexter's probably talking about the hidden room that Nancy finds, but maybe, maybe she's not. And was I unable to U-turn here too? Yeah, unable to U-turn there too. Hmm. More weird navigation. Like I said, uh, the navigation in this game can be kind of awkward at points, and that's that's what some people complain about. Okay, so we just got the uh, dinner order for couscous. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Back to my review. Um, do, 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 do. The library is a cool-looking area. It's got some neat-looking uh, books. It's got some neat books about Marie Antoinette, and it's got a few puzzles. The important one is the fingerprinting puzzle, and um, Sassy Detective Magazine in Nancy's room, it's on the table in Nancy's room, explains the puzzle, and I liked that for two reasons. Uh, one, it's only half of the puzzle. Nancy still has, uh, has a challenge of finding uh, dust and a paintbrush to get the fingerprints. So uh, the magazine guides you with the puzzle, but it doesn't fully solve the puzzle for you. That's reason number one why I like it. Uh, reason number two, I know I never would have been able to solve the challenge without that puzzle uh, giving the first initial hint. <laughs> I'd compare it to the fingerprinting challenge in Nancy Drew Legend and the Crystal Skull. It's the same basic puzzle in both games, but a lot harder in the Crystal Skull because the game never explains how to do fingerprinting, and it doesn't even tell you that breath. It doesn't even tell you that Bess has the powder in her inventory. You're just supposed to know all that information ahead of time. So, uh, so, so compared to, uh, compared to, to, to the, um, the Crystal Skull game, I think this game does a much better job with the fingerprinting challenge. Now, you might say the game is hand-holding you, but not really. If you do need hand-holding, you can call Nancy's friends for help. Uh, the hint system with Nancy's friends is exactly the same in this game as it was in the previous game. But for some reason, I liked it a lot better here. I thought it was better implemented. The phone calls were more fun and interesting, and I liked them. And it was nice to see the official debut of Nancy's, uh, uh, of Ned's official voice actor. Back to the library, though, there's a puzzle about Wisconsin. Uh, one of the books talks about the, Wis the coordinates for Wisconsin. Nancy can zoom in on a globe in the library, so you set the globe to the correct coordinates and you press the knob. Not an intuitive puzzle, but there aren't any other coordinates in the game, so it's not too tough to figure out which are the coordinates that you need to get. So uh, solving solving that globe puzzle gives you the fire uh, gives you the fireplace puzzle. So I, I mean, it gives you the answer to the fireplace puzzle. It gives you three numbers. You insert the numbers into the thing that's over the fireplace to reveal a hidden room. That reveals Ezra Wickford's secret room, where he has mementos of Dex for Dexter growing up, and he also has an apology for the way the two of them drifted apart over the years. And I thought, I thought that was that was neat. I, I really liked this uh, learning Dexter's backstory through letters and such. I, uh, such I thought it, I thought it was very well done. Also well done is the clever puzzle with the library. See, Nancy, Nancy is supposed to enter the library through the elevator shaft, but she can do that in reverse. She does the elevator shaft uh, in, to library puzzle in reverse to reach the bottom of the shaft, leading to the hidden underground entrance to the Royal Tower. And that, that is a very clever, uh, clever puzzle idea. I have no idea why, why, why I can't turn left here. More navigation weirdness. Oh, and Jock isn't here. Oh, dear. Okay. 
Well, I, I have no idea why they built the hidden underground entrance to the Royal Tower underneath the heavy elevator that easily falls down and kills you. In fact, that's one of the death sequences in this game. It, it's gross. It's, it's a really gross death sequence. Um, so you go through the tower, uh, you go through the pathway that leads to the Royal Tower, and you find Jacques! Jacques, who's trying to break into the Royal Tower. I like this part where Nancy confronts Jacques and he tries to explain himself. Jacques says that his grandfather helped uh, dismantle the tower in France so it could be sent to America. Inside the tower, he, he found a medallion. Oh, oh dear, I'm stuck inside the elevator. Well, this is what the elevator stuck sequence looks like. Okay, Nancy can die if you try to jump here. Here, plow! Ow, ow, gross, disgusting, not good. Uh, and the way to escape is to look down, uh, look down, then turn around, and, and then go up. I wonder why you can't just turn around normally. Let's see, I need to go on the box, and then look up. Like I said, weird navigation sometimes, but that's not where I am in my actual, in my actual review. Okay. So getting, getting back to um, what I was talking about. So Jacques' great-grandfather helped dismantle the tower in France so it could be sent to America, and inside the tower, the great-grandfather found a medallion in Marie Antoinette's diary. The grandfather must have no sense of value because he decided to keep the worthless medallion, and, and he, let the, he left the diary where it was. Uh, Jacques is hoping to get inside the tower and find the diary, even though there's really no reason at all to believe the diary is still there. The people who rebuilt the tower probably took it for themselves 80 years ago. It's not exactly the most well-hidden diary either. Nancy quickly finds it. And Jacques' story is kind of a little ridiculous. Like, oh, this thing that was there 80 years ago, even though the tower was dismantled and brought back, it, it's still there, I swear, it's still there. So the story is, in fact, a little bit ridiculous. So you don't know if he's telling the truth or making it all up. I kind of like that sense of it. I don't know if that was on purpose or not, though. The story is copy-pasted from the book, but uh, so they say so they did have an opportunity to change the story and make it a bit more plausible, but they decided not to. So um, Nancy believes Jacques. Nancy's just a, a, a nice person like that, so she believes Jacques. Uh, Jacques asks Nancy to go get the medallion from his locker. And uh, oh, uh, she, she goes to get the medallion from the locker while he does something. He, he doesn't say what it is he has to do. It's just an excuse for Nancy to be alone when she goes to the locker, while she looks at Jock's locker. And the locker is an interesting location. It's got a pamphlet, uh, a pamphlet on diamonds. And uh, it's got a letter from his fiance and a letter from immigration saying that he's going to be deported in a month. You know, now I'm a little surprised that Jock isn't the culprit. We see him try to break into the tower, and he has more motives than anybody else. Like, he's got his family honor, he's, he, his personal honor, making up for his failure at the Olympics. Uh, he needs to provide for his fiance, and he's super desperate because he's got a one-month time limit. He would have been a he would have been a good culprit. It, it would have made sense if he was a culprit. At the locker, uh, the culprit knocks Nancy out and steals the medallion. Culprit hides the medallion in Hotchkiss's room in order to frame the professor, but to be honest, I didn't notice that. You don't get a lot of time to look at the medallion in Jock's locker, maybe three seconds at most. Plus, the, all, all three medallions are identical, except for a little color in the middle. So, the culprit's clever plot twist of switching medallions was completely lost on me. You know, good idea, bad, bad execution. Do, 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 do. So, Jacques and Nancy get into a fight over what just happened. He thinks she only pretended to get herself knocked unconscious so she could steal the medallion for herself. That's stupid, and I, I don't know why he's getting so upset. I, it's not like he knows what the medallion is, is for anyway. And Nancy argues back, which you could say is somewhat unusual for her. She doesn't usually get angry in these games, but I was 100% on her side this time because Jacques is totally off base with his wild accusations. The fight ends with Jacques refusing to never talk to Nancy ever again. He must be taking jerk lessons from Dexter. Or is he? 
At this point, Dexter changes from a grumpy person to a happy person. Well, well, kind of. He still frowns all the time. He's working on it, okay? A happy Dexter knows that Nancy got into the tower area because she got red dirt on her shoes. One problem, there's no red dirt on the ground anywhere in the tower area. I, I guess I guess the, the, uh, the art department, the graphics team, just didn't get that memo, and so they, they made the entire area just made of stone. I, 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 I'll, I'll try to point that out to you if, if I ever actually reach that area while I'm playing the game. Uh, kind of distracted uh, talking about the game to actually play the game as quickly as possible. Here I'm trying to get some sort of key. There we go. Brilliant, brilliant. So uh, either way, uh, Dexter is proud of Nancy's inquisitive nature and he agrees to help her. I like seeing Dexter's minor change of heart, and I think it fits well with his character. Nancy's reminding Dexter of the happy parts of his childhood, before everything went bad. So Dexter's willing to help her out a bit. Uh, not too much, just, just a bit, just a bit. So he tells Nancy that the key to the Royal Tower is in a shed out back. And if you read the poem uh, that was inside the library, uh, he tells her that Ezra Wickford's private garden is out in the back too. The garden is a nice little area with a simple puzzle. Uh, just turn the arrow thing around and pull the lever for a box. You use the key from the library to open it and find a red medallion. When you find the medallion, music plays, which is a nice little touch. The little, you solve the music, you solve the puzzle jingle. It, it plays whenever you find a medallion in this game. I like it. I, I think it's nice. This, this game has a lot of neat little touches like that. Uh, the shed, which is also outside, is uh, it's an okay location, not very interesting to look at. Nancy easily finds the key, along with a newspaper clipping that says Dexter is, is an ex-con. He went to jail. I don't know why Dexter keeps that clipping in his shed. So at this point in the game, you can solve the green medallion puzzle. Uh, you talk to Lisa, which is the only time in the game that you have to talk to her. Lisa says that Dexter was hiding a medallion in the shed. Uh, Lisa would go out and help Nancy find it, but, you know, she doesn't want to leave her comfy chair. Let's see. Is this how I solve the puzzle, or is that... That is so not how I solve the, uh, the, uh, the puzzle of getting into the library. My mistake. <laughs> Okay, well, Lisa, Lisa is, is stuck inside her comfy, comfy chair, so she, she, she absolutely refuses to help Nancy go explore outside. So Nancy goes back outside to get the medallion from the shed, and the medallion's near a rat. Gross! Ew, gross rat. Personally, I like the rat animation. It's neat that they put so much effort into a short jump scare, which doesn't last for more than a few seconds. And that's part of the reason why these Nancy Drew games are so good. They make a sincere effort for everything, even those tiny little things which easily, easily could have been phoned in. When Nancy tries to go back inside, the door is locked. And now all of a sudden it's too cold for her to function. Oh, funny how that happens at the exact same time she went outside. So she goes back inside the shed, and she has a puzzle. Uh, this is a puzzle, too. This is the puzzle of Nancy going back inside the grate before Dexter catches her. So Nancy has a puzzle uh, getting the ski lift to run. When she does get the ski lift running, Dexter comes in to yell at her, and he lets her inside. Good thing Dexter's such a grump, because... Uh, he <laughs> Good thing he's such a grump that he immediately goes out whenever somebody messes with his ski lift, you know, because otherwise Nancy would have been dead. And I, I thought the ski lift puzzle was a good puzzle. I liked it. Nancy can use the skeleton key from the shed to go back into the royal tower, and this is kind of a pain because you have to backtrack all the way there. It'd be nice if there was a shortcut, if Nancy could go back through the alternate pathway that she can use to exit the tower area. You know that, that, that pathway, that hidden pathway near the library? Why can't Nancy go back through that door? I know the door is pretending to be a wall, but Nancy knows where it is now. Like, like, like Nancy does know where it is now. You think she could at least, you know, go back through it or, or prop it open? And where is the trigger? There's a trigger area. Let me actually show off that, 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 that 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 pathway thing uh where is it it's not here it, it's here like why couldn't nancy go back through that door why couldn't she go back through that door that would save me so much time she should have propped it open with a box 
So the Royal Tower, the Royal Tower area has a series of puzzles, which means the library and the tower are the only areas with multiple puzzles. Some people complain about the lack of puzzles in this game, but I had no problem with the puzzle distribution. Uh, they're all solid puzzles and they were more than enough to keep my interest. So the first puzzle inside inside the Royal Tower area was the was the chains puzzle. You want to pull the chains in order to form some sort of um, triangle pattern and it's tricky because some chains move other chains it's basically the diego on stairs puzzle from the last game only they do it with uh chains and not letters uh solve that puzzle to create a walkway over a huge pit i can only imagine what the people who who reconstructed the tower thought uh thought when when they were when they were building this puzzle uh, past that, we have the retractable stairs, conveniently located above a holding cell. I can only imagine what the people who reconstructed the tower thought of that area when they were rebuilding it. Uh, it's a weird area. We, it's like, oh, we've got a bottomless pit, and now we've got a holding cell uh, under retractable stairs. You get the stairs to come out by solving a slider puzzle where you slide tokens to the correct spots, which is a good puzzle. And you can easily figure out what you're supposed to do, even without any instructions. The tower itself is a gold and shiny tower, and it looks great. Besides for, uh, besides for uh, the floor, uh, the only thing Nancy can look at is the gold leaf puzzle. And that is the one puzzle I don't like. Um, you know, that is one puzzle I can do without. You have to swap a bunch of pieces and rotate them in order to form a picture of a bunch of leaves. The puzzle would have been more tolerable if it was a uh, if it was a picture of a person, like like in the next game. Um, but no, it's just some random leaf pattern that we've never seen before, and all the leaves look the same. And it's difficult to find out what the final puzzle should be. You know what would help? What would help is if we had like a referent. If you could get a close up of the leaf pattern right next to that one, just as a reference, so we could see what the final version of the puzzle is supposed to look like. That that would help a lot. On senior mode, you need to move all of the pictures, all of the tiles in, in the leaf tile puzzle. But on junior mode, all the inside pieces are already in place. You don't need to move them anymore. That was a nice way to differentiate between the two game gameplay modes, as it's somewhat easier to get the outside pieces in place. Uh, somewhat. Uh, they've got those frayed edges, although I always seem to get the picture upside down or sideways before I get it done. I always seem to mess it up, but it, it's a good idea nonetheless. Solving that puzzle um, gives you Marie Antoinette's diary, which I thought Nancy was going to be able to read, but she doesn't. She can't even look at it. It's just one of these things in her inventory. And she can't look at it like she can look at all the other books in this game. So I, I guess Nancy decided she's not even going to try to translate late 1700s French. The only person who could do that is Jacques. Oh wait, no, 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 wait. he's throwing a pouty fit right now. Well then, the only person who can do that is Professor Hotchkiss. She will be our translator. Nancy goes to Hotchkiss, and Hotchkiss makes her answer a trivia question before she can help her. If you can't figure out the answer, just go back to her and ask for a new question. Uh, there are five trivia questions in total. Three of them, three of the answers are found in books, and one is found on the elevator. The final uh, question is how many windows are on the face of the castle, and everybody dislikes this question because there's nowhere you can get the answer. I don't think there's anywhere in the game where you can get the answer at, at any rate. And, and you can't actually see all of, you actually can't, you can't see all of the pictures on the, all of the windows from the face of the castle. So it's completely unfair to, to, it's like, you can't see it, you can't look up the answer. It's just an unfair question. That's why everybody dislikes it. The answer is 15, by the way, 15. In case you were wondering what the answer was, it's 15, 15 windows. When Nancy answers the question, Hotchkiss makes Nancy an apprentice. Hooray! Now you can get inside Hotchkiss's area from 3 to 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, 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 wait. Hotchkiss is in Lisa's area from 3 to 6 in the morning. She gives Nancy an extra key to her room, and she agrees to translate Marie Antoinette's diary. And by agree, uh, I mean she threatens to beat up Nancy if Nancy doesn't hand it over. Professor Hotchkiss, lovable professor or violent maniac? You decide. Hotchkiss's room is fancy, and I like it. I, I think it's a fancy room. Uh, the third medallion is hidden behind a pillow on her couch. Why doesn't Nancy get a couch in her room? That's unfair. 
The room also has Hotchkiss's typewriter, a boots, and a somewhat bothersome puzzle. See, Hotchkiss has a video camera, but, but the battery is running low. You need to put the battery in the charger, skip ahead a day, then use the battery to watch the video. It wouldn't be so bad, except you also need to skip ahead a day to let Hotchkiss translate the diary. So you spend two days waiting on Hotchkiss and a battery. Uh, the video is of Professor Hotchkiss finding a peephole. I'm almost done solving this puzzle, hooray! There we go, yay! Okay, so this is the area I said. Uh, the red dirt, do you see any red dirt on the ground? Do you see any red dirt anywhere? I don't really see any red dirt. This area is just stone, so how did Nancy get red dirt on her shoes from this area? That's the complaint I was making earlier. <gasps> Jacques Bleu, what are you doing there? Okay, so, um, uh, the, the video, uh, Professor Hotchkiss's video, it's of her finding a peephole. Nancy can use the medallions of the peephole to get three French phrases and a series of symbols. But wait! Hotchkiss found Marie Antoinette's decoder inside the diary! You need to look at the decoder, and that's a step that a few gamers got stuck on because it's in the corner of Hotchkiss's desk, kind of tucked away where it's not obvious that it's something you must click on in order to progress the game. Nancy automatically matches the symbols with the decoder to get the message, Purple Rose Hold Diamond Key of Queen. Good job, Nancy! You just saved us from having to solve the puzzle. I just wish Nancy was equally good with memorizing symbols in the previous game because that would have made the, the safe puzzle a lot more tolerable. Uh, but seriously, I wonder why they decided to have Nancy solve the puzzle automatically and let a, instead of letting uh, players solve the puzzle themselves. I wouldn't have minded going back and forth between the people and the decoder in order to translate the three short phrases. I think that puzzle could have worked, especially because they're short phrases. It's not too burdensome. Uh, perhaps this is a lost opportunity in the game. Uh, Nancy goes to the Royal Tower, and sure enough, the mural has Marie Antoinette holding a purple rose... So Nancy decides to desecrate the 300-year-old artwork by smashing the rose tile to bits in order to get the key. The key and the medallions unlock Marie Antoinette's treasure, which is a large, large diamond. Lisa shows up, and she's not there for a photo opportunity. She's there because she's the culprit of the game. She pepper sprays Nancy, and then she spends a few minutes explaining the details of her crimes. Like, she destroyed the library because of a translation mix-up. Uh, she switched medallions just to confuse Nancy, and she tried to kill Nancy in order to make the game more exciting. I mean, um, she tried to kill Nancy just to keep Nancy on her toes. She didn't want Nancy finding the finding finding the treasure too easily. Right. Yeah, I thought her whole plan was to have Nancy find the diamond. Why are you trying to stop her from doing what well, whatever. What what whatever. Nancy asks Lisa, why are you doing this? And Lisa's response is not really a motive. What she does is she quotes a 1980s song. She, she quotes Madonna's Material Girl. And that is kind of ridiculous. It's even worse than the second game, where you ask the culprit why they're doing things, and uh, the culprit says they're doing it because of the chicken dance. Lisa steals the diamond and runs off just as the pepper spray wears off. If uh, in the game over sequence, uh, Lisa just runs away at the bottom of the tower. You go to the bottom of the tower and Lisa runs away. I don't think that should be a game over sequence. Like, where did Lisa run to? She's still trapped inside this castle during a snowstorm. Uh, Lisa can... Nancy can still get Dexter and have him summon the authorities long before Lisa can escape. Um, unless she has, like, a secret snowmobile? She had a snowmobile in the book. Not in the game, though. No snowmobiles in this game. Also in the book, Professor Hotchkiss is male. Fun fact! I don't know why they decided to make the professor female in this game. Maybe it's because they wanted two male characters and two female characters, like the previous game, which also has a balanced gender representation. I don't know. Maybe that's the idea. Anyway, uh, you know... I think Nancy still had a chance to catch up with Lisa instead of automatically giving up at the bottom of the tower. I think Nancy still could have caught up with Lisa. And hey, I just realized something. Uh, the chain puzzle resets itself the second time Nancy visits the tower, right? Why did that happen? Maybe Nancy could have used that to capture the culprit. Maybe that's how Nancy could have stopped Lisa from escaping the tower. 
Like, there's no way to solve the chain puzzle from the other side of the tower, so so Lisa would have been trapped inside, would have been a nice trap, uh, a very, a very neat way to defeat the culprit. Of course, Nancy would have been trapped with Lisa, but still, that's better than letting Lisa get away. So in the correct solution to the, the puzzle, Nancy presses the button for the retractable stairs, and Lisa falls down the stairs into the conveniently located holding cell. Lisa calls Nancy a bad friend, which really hurts my feelings. And we have a happy ending where Dexter gets a job promotion, Hotchkiss's translation becomes a bestseller, and Jock gets married. Lisa is arrested for grand theft instead of, you know, attempted murder, because trying to kill Nancy multiple times is not really all that bad. Taking a diamond from the castle's owner when the castle's owner had no idea that diamond existed? That is a crime. Trying to kill Nancy? Not a crime. And that's it for the game. That's that's all I have to say about the game. I'd say it's an improvement over the last game uh, because the characters are more important to the story. In Haunted Mansion, Charlie and Abby are mostly optional characters. Uh, the only time you need to talk to them is during the talk to everyone puzzles. The game tries to give each character its own subplot here and you have to talk to them multiple times. I like the increased emphasis on story and characters here in Treasure and Royal Tower. Overall, this is an excellent game. In fact, there is nothing in the game I would change, except maybe that gold leaf puzzle that's overly difficult, or the two days of Hotchkiss skipping, or, or like I said, I, I, I would like to have the Royal Tower somewhere in the game. Um, but still, still, those, those are minor problems. They barely detract from the game's quality, in my opinion. So I, I'm going to give Nancy Drew, Treasure in the Royal Tower, a perfect 10 out of 10. And I've been talking for over 40 minutes now. I need to take a break and, and just have a drink because my throat is parched like no tomorrow.